Today, Dodge wants to talk to its customers about what they want in the next electric vehicle. Subaru is selling the Solterra, or at least taking reservations in the United States. And also Valvoline, the oil company, is getting into electric car services. All that and more is to come today on Daily Car News. Good morning, my name is Gary Fasalvo. You join us today on the 9th of February, 2022. It is wonderful to have you here today. I've got so much news for us today and a lot of really interesting stuff going on in the world of cars. First, I wanna take us to Apple, of all places and of all people. Chargeway, the EV charging app, is finally making its way onto Apple CarPlay. Previous Apple or current Apple CarPlay users have been asking Apple to in integrate Chargeway into its app so that way you can see a sort of interface of all the different chargers in your area. You have a trip planner, color-coded charging stations like blue and green for Chatamo and J1772, excuse me, and what they also have is a ranking system, one to seven, where it'll show the higher the number, the faster the charging. This is very nice to see in, in the world of electric cars where you know the, the, the Tesla supercharging system isn't the only one. If you're familiar with Tesla supercharging system, that is how they route you to your destination. You have to go through Tesla's network. If you're not in a Tesla vehicle, you know, all bets are off and you have more options to get around. And it's very nice to see Apple and CarPlay finally integrate Chargeway into electric vehicles. Next, Kia has released a new plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, but it's nothing too new. It's the Kia Sportage, the Kia that we all know and love. This new plug-in hybrid has 32 miles of electric vehicle range from a 1.6 liter uh, four-cylinder turbo. It makes 177 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque from the combustion engine, but the 90 horsepower electric engine bumps that up an, an extra 90 horsepower. It has a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and it will be for sale later this year. We're expecting Q3. Ram and the new Ram Revolution has been confirmed. Very cool to see that. And what's interesting is Dodge is taking on user input for vehicle design. Ram Real Talk Tour is what Dodge is sort of rolling out to get to owners to find out what they want from electric trucks and other vans and vehicles that they will be rolling out. You can go to ramrevolution.com to reach out to Ram to you know, express your opinions, say, hey, I would like this, I would like that. Can it handle 240 volt? Is it only 120? You know, if, if it's a truck, it's meant to be used. And if you want a 240 volt welder, it's gonna need to support that, for example. So if you are in this market, reach out to ramrevolution.com to both express your opinions and also ask them, hey, what do you think about this? And maybe also get updates from Ram themselves. This uh, platform is due in 2024. Um, I'm curious to know if that's a little too late. You know, by then we will have um, the Ford Lightning, Chevy Silverado, uh, Hummer EV, um, the Tesla Cybertruck. A lot, I, I hope that it, it's not too late for a saturated electric vehicle or electric pickup market. I don't think so, but it might just be. Subaru are taking reservations for the Solterra in the United States. They're taking reservations right now, but they're saying it's limited, but we don't have any specifics on how many available spots there are. Customers will be finalizing with their local retailers and deliveries are planned for the summer of 2022. If you don't know about the Subaru Solterra, we're expecting a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, 220 miles of electric range, 215 horsepower, and 248 pound-feet of torque. Dual motor, all-wheel drive, of course. Alfa Romeo is in the news because they finally have a third vehicle in the United States. It's called the Tonale, and it is a smaller SUV. It'll slot just behind the Stelvio, their main SUV. It has a two-liter, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. It'll be for sale in Q1 of 2023. Again, it'll slot just below the Stelvio, in their lineup. Um, again, it's in the middle of the car as a sort of small SUV, large sedan type of platform. Now it will feature a plug-in hybrid system. Um, what I'm seeing is a plug-in hybrid system of about 180 horsepower, 
from a 1.3 liter internal combustion engine, uh, four cylinder powering the front wheels, and then a 121 horsepower electric motor powering the rear wheels for a total of 272. That's super cool. What's interesting about the Tonale is that it's a plug-in hybrid. So the front wheels are powered by a 180 horsepower, 1.3 liter internal combustion engine, four cylinder, and then the rear axle has a 121 horsepower electric motor providing rear wheel drive. Those two together, all wheel drive, 272 horsepower total. Now the rear motor is powered by a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack, and we're expecting 31 miles of EV range. Very cool to see. I would love to see if we can get one here in person to test. This thing is, is awesome. And I think um, you're sort of threading the line if you are doing a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, threading the needle, if you will. You know, if you run out of battery juice, then you're lugging around a dead battery, making your fuel efficiency worse. But at the same time, you do have the best of both worlds. It, I guess it can depend on what kind of driver you are and what kind of commute you have to uh, see if this vehicle is right for you. Now, I mentioned earlier Valvoline. Yes, Valvoline, the oil company, the people you go to for oil changes, is getting into the electric services market. Yeah, they're opening pilot programs in retail stores across the United States where they can maintain sort of limited things for EVs, everything from 12 volt battery services, tire rotations, key fob and battery replacements, cabin air filters, things that you could do on normal cars that aren't specific to internal combustion engines. This is super nice to see. Um, the sort of third party services um, will start to roll out sooner as more and more electric vehicles hit the road. So you don't have to go to the manufacturer for those services yourself. So very nice to see competition in the market. Best of luck to Valvoline here from me personally. We are expecting the pilot program to start in the summer of 2022, that's just in a couple of months, and hopefully this will roll out into a more full-time thing later on in the years to come. Ford is re-engineering the Mach-E, but not in the way that you would think. They are taking more of a let's fix things as they come and rather than wait for the next model year to implement those changes, they're going to fix them incrementally and improve the car incrementally so that way they can get as much engineering taken care of before Ford Lightning and Ford E-Transit hit the roads. They, they don't wanna wait for the traditional windows and I don't blame them. Tesla has shown that this is a viable solution in the last five, six, seven years, right? Um, they wanna triple Mach-E's production by 2023. So in order to do that, you gotta, you know, re-engineer the car to uh, be conducive to that sort of manufacturing capability. And they also have goals for 150,000 annual Ford Lightnings, right? So there's big goals for Ford ahead. And in order to do that, you need to, you know, sort of up efficiencies in manufacturing. In the article I read, I'll link it down below, the Ford CEO was speaking about how, you know, they could go down from two to three cable wiring harnesses, two to three different cooling types of things. And sort of take those and bring it down to one more efficient type of component. So that's the kind of thing we're talking about here, where the engineering you did two to three years ago, components may be better, um, tolerances may be better, materials are better, that they can create more efficient components for these cars. So they're gonna implement this incrementally over time rather than wait for model, model years and mid-year refreshes to hit. Very cool to see Ford do this. I, I love this approach personally. I think it is um, you know, very responsible to sort of fix things as they come and then make a better car every single day, if you will. So now we go to Ford Olds rival Chevy. The new Chevy Blazer is out and it's not electric. It's a 2.4 liter internal combustion four cylinder making 230 horsepower base, 3.6 liter V6 making 300 horsepower for the premium models. And then of course we'll have the numbers for the RS later. We're expecting a nine speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive is available. This is you know a very, very popular car or at least a very popular segment. So I'm not surprised to see Chevy uh, make another iteration of their new Blazer for what's happening with the sort of mini SUV, uh, CUV type of market. And last, Jeep is in the news. Jeep Wrangler High Tide is what they're calling their new car. 
It's a new sort of iteration of the Wrangler, starting at 50835 with destination. It is available for order this month, and the first 500 will be called the Jeep Beach, featuring special hood dec uh, decals. The high tide is going to start as a Sport S version of the normal Jeep Wrangler, and they're adding features like new tires, B-block capable wheels, a lift kit, a body color hardtop, um, LED headlights and taillights and fog lamps, rock rails, and more. If you are into Jeeps, you're going to love this because, you know, you know, you know how Jeeps go. They are a rugged platform that you can sort of build up or you can have Jeep do it for you. And, you know, what's wrong with either? And also, Velocity Yellow. That's a great name, right? Velocity Yellow it is probably the most um, Florida Jeep kind of color that you can get out there. I love this thing. We'll put it right here for you. I think more cars and more car companies need to be so bold. You know, I get that we're doing you know, grays and silvers and blacks and whites, but every once in a while, a little kiss of Velocity Yellow isn't gonna hurt. So good on you, Jeep, for um, making things more exciting every single day. A lot of these components are coming from Mopar um, themselves, by the way. So it's not just any old Jeep um, branded things. It is coming from Mopar um, and the lift kits and the bushings and whatnot are all from them. So thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Gary Fasalvo. This has been Daily Car News. Of course, our socials and links from everything this morning is down in the description below at daily at underscore daily car news at Gary Fasalvo for us on Twitter. If you have any tips or anything that you've heard on the car industry, if you see any cars charging, go ahead and tweet at us and we'll make sure to share what you have found on social media as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.